So what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be going through a top 8 deck analysis from the TKE TTST, the largest online universes event that we have had thus far over on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tam Cardwell. So if you missed it, you're watching this on YouTube, uh, go out and click the link in the description down below. Give it a follow for whenever I go live. We're going to be doing that significantly more often. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, just jump into it. The last character, the last deck profile deck analysis that I will be doing today, and that is Mark Tyner's The Undisputed Best Universes Player of Current Year, Current Time, Time of Recording, Your Nationals, Worlds, Tim Keefe Experimental, Champ uh, Experimental Tournament Champion, Mark Tyner Cassander deck. So with that, let's uh look at these sleeves. Look how look how good these sleeves are. They're so good. Alright. With that, let's uh flip these out. Alright. So Cassandra. We'll put this up here. So Cassandra. What does Cassandra do? Cassandra is a seven hand size twenty two vitality character. Gives me big spin. Bike energies, like we said before, um, that is exceptional at giving all of her attacks a ton of speed. Her, her, the blocks that she has on her cards are bad. The blocks she has are not good, but because of the blocks on her cards, her cards just get that much quicker, right? And then once per turn, after you check an asset, you just build in your staging area committed. It's very, very strong. Um, this, this is a she gets the most out of playing plenty, and as you can see, of these cool, super cool green cards. Yeah, very, very strong ability. Um, honestly, not too threatening um, if you just look at the, the character. But when you combine it with the kit that we have, it is very, very potent. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the attack lineup first and see where we're at. All right, so Swallow Your Soul. Uh, one of the key attacks inside of this deck, if it deals three or more damage as a throw, you get to add it the top card of your deck to your momentum. Um, with it being a four low, we give it four extra speed, and with Omega Sword and Owl Shield, you get to give it four extra damage. So it is a nine low for seven on a four diff that gives you a momentum. And that's not if you combo it, right? And that's not if you if you play the combo on this card. And yeah, this card is a uh, is a setup card for a ton of other crazy stuff to come. Um, up next, a very um, a a very crazy. Oh, don't worry, Jose. We will get there. A very crazy card for this meta. We've got Tombstone Stunner. Um, a three high block, so it is a six high inside of Cassandra. Uh, a six a six speed attack for seven damage. Stun one. Uh, your next throw attack gets plus two damage. Seems really good. Seems really good. Seems really good. As well as it's got the stat that says it cannot be discarded from your card pool during the card during the combat phase. And the reason that this is important is everybody in their grandma was afraid of Lord Raptor and how potent. Um, Guardian's Final Duty was. Enhance. Discard this card from the card pool. Tombstone Stunner is a card that, that Lord Raptor has to deal with. He's not allowed to, to mess around with that card. This is the reason. This is why Mark Tyner stands head and shoulders above everybody else. Is he was smart enough to play an Earth deck that had Tombstone Stunner because he was because of countering uh, Lord Raptor. This was a deck-building choice. This is not the best card that you can put in the deck, but this is the best card that you can put in the deck to fight Raptor. It is a throw. It cannot be discarded. It if it's blocked with a breaker attack, your next one gets minus two difficulty. It's like it's it's so it's so good against Raptor. And because you are Cassandra, it's fast, it's strong, it's good against every other character as well. Like it's so good. It's so good. And this is this is why everybody at home, go out, subscribe to uh, their YouTube channel. Uh, Universal Studios. Go subscribe now. More content coming away. The next deck we're talking about is Angel Discus. Um, this card is... This card is a... Uh, one of the crazy ones. Uh, oh, it's just a three damage attack, Tam. It's so three damage. No, I 
No, you're wrong. Since it is a three block modifier, because the block is bad, it is a six speed attack inside of Cassandra, as well as a six damage attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a three diff, six mid for six, that returns to your hand, and if you block with it, you take no damage. Red. Red. <laughs> like, this card is so great. This card is so crazy good. Wow, it's so good. Six mid for six, multiple one, breaker range safe. If you block it, deals no damage. If you have an asset, you add it up to your hand. Uh, this card is crazy. And honestly, it's only super, like, this this nutty banana sandwich in two characters, right? It's really good in Cassandra. It's really good in Earth Lilith. And that's it. That's it. Otherwise, this character is, uh, this card is fine. Yeah, crazy tool. I'm so happy he's playing three of it. Um, you could get away with two if you really, really wanted to. But I think three is a perfectly fine number. Up next, we've got Triple Vicious Madness. This takes a lot of deck building skill. This this kind of shows you um, the 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 heads up play. Everybody who plays Cassandra nowadays just jams for Vicious Madness in their deck. And th so uh, if somebody else had the thought of Tombstone Stunner, these numbers would have been switched. This would have been the three of. This would have been the uh, the four of. Um, but but. Mark knew that you don't you don't need Vicious Madness to connect because you have Swallow Your Soul, because you have Tombstone Stunner, because you have Angel Discus. This is kind of just a win more card. Like this card's really good versus Kuwabara. This card's really good as a as a turn two poke, but after turn two, when they've established a board, this card actually loses value inside of a deck like Cassandra, inside of the deck that we're playing. So I mean really, really smart that uh Vicious Madness is is at the three of here. I completely and totally agree with that decision. Completely agree. Up next, um, this Floodgate Dark Cherry Toe. Uh, this card is exceptionally good to just stick into your card pool, whether it hits, whether it doesn't, um, as the first attack that you play in order to uh, in order to say that the damage that you're getting off of your Owl Shield is uh, not negated at all. They, do, they don't reduce your damage down. Um, one of the sickest plays that you can do inside of this deck is play Swallow Your Soul, Swallow Your Soul, um, give it a bunch of damage off of Owl Shield, doesn't matter how fast it is, although it is ungodly fast at 9 low for 7. Um, grab your 2 momentum off the top, and then play your Dark Chirito on a 6, 7, 8, multiple, t multiple 2. Um, so 1, 2, 3, you have uh, a t just an absolute metric ton of damage coming out um and that they're not allowed to touch the damage on super super good stuff um and if you do like the multiple game plan um a a backup case is from science with love uh you gain multiple x equals the number of face downs your opponent has um with double checking this flips in deadlock this flips a couple yeah there's no uh there's not a ton of flipping happening inside of this deck proper of my opponent's stuff but we uh but this can get, what, multiple two, multiple three? Multiple three is a totally respectable number to multiple. Three free attacks? Everybody in the game would love to have that. Um, not to mention, you get X momentum. X equals the number of unique assets that you have in your board. Excuse me, the X number of assets you have, which could be at best one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Enhance, add the top eight cards of your momentum. Neat. Oh, you're right. We have Kalutus. We have Kalutus at a two of it. It's not multiple three. You're right. I missed this card. You're absolutely correct if you do. Hey, this is not multiple three. This is probably multiple six. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, yeah. This uh, this this is a fantastic um, as a as a additional kill condition. You could take an even just from science, steal your momentum, and then dark cherry toe because it's another way to just kind of swallow your souls, right? Um, a lot of moving parts here. So my assessment of his. My assessment of his attack lineup is it is the most inspired attack lineup in the entire event, and it goes to prove to you why he won the event. Um, I don't think it is single-handedly off of the card selection that he chose, but this card, Hosing Raptor, so bad is the reason that he won in finals. Um, it's like, this is it, right? I'm sure if he fought any other Raptors throughout the day, this card it was one of the big key pieces in order to to push push his win through. What a, such a stunning heads up heads up play for anybody who is on Twitch right now. Clip this, send it to Mark. Mark, I am color me impressed, man. This is such a good find, good good shit, dude. That's so good. Onto his actions and assets, arguably the most um, 
important part of his deck, right? Uh, it's the reason we're running this character is because of how solid our, our assets are. Um, we are playing um, the Dark Tournament Looms. Dark Tournament Looms is an action that says remove, add a card from your momentum to your hand. The best thing to add, honestly, is this Vicious Madness. Hey, look at this eight damage poke. I'll play it. All right, it goes to my momentum on my next turn, on your turn. I'll play my Dark Tournament Looms. I'll pick up my, my eight damage throw. You know you have to deal with it. I'll play it again. It goes to my momentum. And, and this card replaces itself because it gets to draw an additional card. Like, this card's this card's super, super good. Um, yeah, this card's this card's very, very rad. Uh we're playing a triple Omega Sword and Elk Shield. Honestly, I did not expect this card to exist in uh his list either. Another one of those um impressive cards to be played. I personally, Tamar Cardwell, would not have registered any event with this card, but I mean I watched on the VOD, and you can catch it all out on my on my Twitch for at least the next week. Um, of this this uh, card, putting in crazy work, doing that just that, picking up Vicious Madness, picking up Swallow Your Soul, picking up Tombstone Sun, or when it mattered. Very good. On the uh, assets, we've got uh, Elk Shield. Elk Shield after you block with it. Um, you only take one damage and you can block with it from your staging area. So if you find it with Cassandra's response, even if it does come in committed, like she says, um, you are still allowed to block with it from your staging area so that your opponent's eight damage vicious madnesses do one. Very, very strong. As well as um, a little bit of uh, foundation disruption and committing it. This card. Omega Sword and Owl Shield, the reason that Cassandra is so unbelievably good is because of how the, because is strictly because of this card if we banned omega sword and owl shield this uh deck um falls from being a plus possibly top three top five best decks in the game down to b plus a minus i believe that wholeheartedly i think that without these three cards this deck is still exceptionally good but it is not so good, so good that you just get away for free. With that said, with this card gone, these decks now get banned <laughs> because of how much card pool stuffing exists in uh in the format. Um, but yeah, so so while this card is ready in your staging area, your blocks ignore progressive difficulty forever. You do not have to pay progressive difficulty to pay your to play your blocks. Not to mention, you check a four, your stuff gets a bunch of damage. We've already talked about that. And that is playable while committed for some crazy reason. And then lastly, if your name is Cassandra, which it is, you get minus two to your block modifier. So yeah, she has all these terrible block modifiers. These cards are so hard to block with. Just kidding. Twice, this is a one mid block. This is a two mid block. Can you imagine actually blocking with Swallow Your Soul and getting away with it and not being punished? Yeah, this card is, this card is so, so good. Up next, we've got Kalutus. Um, after your attack deals damage, you uh, get to flip one of your opponent's foundations or even more importantly, their assets. So in the mirror, whoever sees Kalutus first gets to just start flipping all of your opponent's owl shields and you get to win the game. This card is such, such a killer uh, important piece in the mirror match. It's so important. Wowzers. Um, as well as once you are at deadlock, this attack is plus six damage, plus six damage, plus six damage. Wait, weapon as well? Plus six damage, <laughs> not a weapon, not a weapon, cool. Yeah, you just get big, huge damage pumps on this stuff. So like, um, your Swallow Your Soul becomes a 13 damage attack, gets six from this, four from this. We love that. <laughs> Up next, we've got Cormorant, the technically worse version of Elk Shield, and you can tell because there's three of it here and two of it here. Um, it's a one mid block that you can block from your staging area, so if it gets built in committed, sounds rad, um, but it is Breaker 2 as opposed to the uh, only deals one damage. Um, very, very potent card. Very, very strong card. We've got uh, one Maze Castle. Uh, Shoutouts to Scott Sunman. If you're looking for Maze Castles, go hit him up. Um, it is a, a terrain. None of the other cards in our deck are terrains, which means we can only have one of them existing on the board at a time. Discarding a Momentum, which we got a million of from, from Science or Swallow Your Soul. Discarding a Momentum, change the zone to any other zone playable by either player. Played a bunch of throws. We don't really care what zone the attack is. We don't really care. But more importantly, what we care about is response commit. After your opponent makes a check to play an attack, the check gets a minus two. And so we are trying to make my opponent play less cards. We want my opponent to be less hand sized to constantly edge out that advantage or overcommit so that when I throw my big backswing, they've got two less resources to deal with uh, to deal with my cool stuff. 
Up next, taking a drink of water. Up next, we've got Kavziel. Kavziel um, commits to seal one of my opponent's problem foundations, as well as um, if I absolutely need to block something, which this deck has no problem doing, um, I can check a couple fours in order to try and find some stuff. Checking the fours is really good because after a card is checked, we uh, get to add our foundation. Good stuff. Um, our uh, second to last uh, asset is Swordfish 2. If you notice, this card does not have the Earth symbol. Yes, indeed, this is an off-symboled card because of how just how amazing this card is on defense. You add it to your momentum to add this uh, attack to your momentum. Be careful, though, because if you do get caught with this thing in your card pool, you are now on the life chain, which means that a ton of the cards that you have in your deck, like uh, these ones, just don't oh uh -huh. just don't work you don't get to play these cards anymore right and we're not even gonna go through the through the foundations and so you have to be exceptionally careful about what cards you build what cards you don't build um so you uh you check this card and you build it in with cassandra in committed or the better play is you have it just sitting in your discard pile and you play the key to humanity's freedom. And you enhance remove this to build in your swordfish and then negate their attack. And so you've just got sitting here, you've got under the earth symbol, your own copies of Guardian's Final Duty. Of any, It's two enhances. Enhance, add your swordfish. Enhance, negate this attack. Rad. That's exactly the reason that Raptor is so good, except for we have counters to Cassandra in mainboarded on our attacks. Insane. Actually insane. And then the last foundation, or the last asset that we have is we've got one Soul Calibur. This card is very, very strong at um, making sure that any weapon that gets played is uh, negated uh, with its effect, right? And so we have um, From Signs of Love as a, as a potent kill condition. Um, we've got all of Raptor's attacks as, as they're all weapons except for Azuna Drop which is just throw flash. So anything that has Raptor's face on it as an attack is a weapon. And letting you have enhanced steps uh, as Cassandra during one of Raptor's turns is super good. You instantly, as soon as you find Soul Calibur, your likelihood of winning just shoots up such a such a high percent. Um, it's so, so good. And, it, and most importantly, the most important piece about Soul Calibur is it saves your staging area from Dragon's Tongue. Dragon's Tongue being so good that with Soul Calibur existing on the board, you can never be Dragon's Tongued. You just can't do it. They have to have both Dragon's Tongue and Tagora Brothers in order to stop you. And then you've got paid, uh, Protected the Protector with Swallow Your Soul being a throw and stealing its own momentum in order to, to get you there. And so as soon as you find Soul Calibur, you're not getting Dragon's Tongued. Pretty much guaranteed. You have a Tamer card roll? Guarantee. Easy. <laughs> Up next, under our foundations, we've got um, four Dreaming of Becoming Whole. I'm not honestly in love with four Dreaming. I feel like there's just a there's better choices that we could make here. I think three is fine. Maybe maybe we hmm, maybe he just wants it because of the spam and building out on turn one. I'm not sure that there is a better Earth spam. So chat, if you could think of a better Earth zero diff, please let me know. Um, so maybe Dreaming is just the best call, but Discard of Momentum ready all these seems really good, um, especially if you want to guarantee that you make your checks off of Cassandra and your checks off of Owl Shield. Um, being able to commit this in order to discard a Momentum and then ready these back up so that your check is cooler, I guess that's a fine play. Right? That's, a, that's a good heads up play. Um... Yeah, it's fine. Um, up next, we've got Sense of Morals. Uh, it's Stun Hate. If you stun Cassandra, she'll just block you forever. You're just not allowed to stun this character. Even with Pay to Protect, uh, prote excuse me, Protecting the Protector, negating the stun, you just can't stun against a Sense of Morals Cassandra deck. She's going to make checks. She's going to grab all this extra stuff. Um, she's going to ready her, her staging area. Her blocks aren't going to count as progressive. She's going to ready it. Like, this is the, the reason that you would stun Cassandra is to make her use a Sense of Morals to mill her out of the game which is just not a very useful thing to do it's just not that useful <laughs> um being on the best zero deficit of morals true especially in this deck very safe 
Um, up next, we've got Triple Protecting the Protector. With being able to steal a bunch of momentum with Swallow Your Soul and from Science of Love, um, you'll never get stunned you'll never get removed you'll never get destroyed um this this card just cancels so it, it cancels like a th third of the of the power plays um inside of the game right it just it, it just just bops a bunch of cards and uh not to mention it's a spam so one five of the two low block which feels you know absolutely stunning it feels really really good um you could bring it down to a two of if you absolutely wanted to um, and replace it with some other thing. Um, uh, also, when you swordfish the attack, you dreaming on the next one and then enhance to bring back the swordfish and need another attack. Hey, that is, Lopez, that is also a beautiful line. Great line. Good, 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 good. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think protecting out of two of is totally fine inside this deck um, because we actually don't necessarily care about Cassandra being banged. Which protecting that's that's probably the best target for for protecting. Although protecting versus Lord Raptor is really really good. It gives us some some solid uses for the momentum that we're getting, so that we're, our staging is not just being destroyed. We've got triple Guardian of the Spirit Sword. Uh, this card is Cassandra, but as the emergency button. Minus two, possibly three speed versus an attack. Very useful versus Lord Raptor. Um, and then enhance, discard a card, find an asset from your discard pile, put it in your hand. Very loose, useless on Lord Raptor's turn. Um, but it says that, hey, I'm going to find this Cormorant. I'm going to find this uh, Owl Shield. I'm going to find this Kalutus. I'm going to find these key assets in order to make sure that I get to play the game correctly. Uh, very, very potent card. Uh, I agree with three. I don't think you need four. I think two is actually too little. Um, especially with our big numbers up here, we're not seeing all the uh, attacks. Two Solemn Exorcism. We all know I hate this card. <laughs> I hate this card almost as much as I hate uh, Damnation. Although this card is technically better than damnation because there are more relevant high or mid attack weapons than there are relevant <laughs> foundation enhances <laughs> um yeah solemn exorcism it pretty much exclusively says after you block a weapon a card with this uh black a weapon attack with this card breaker two um you literally hate damnation just because you can at this moment no i think damnation is actually just a bad card um Almost out of spite. No, no, no. I, I've said it on record. If Damnation has some good abilities to negate, then let's negate them, right? Um, Damnation negating Baku Post Girl might be the best play in the game. Let's just say that. Anywho, we're talking about Solemn Exorcism, not that trash trash card, Damnation. Uh, but yeah, the Enhanced Commit, if you have no cards in your hand, draw one. Nigh unplayable. If you, as a seven hand size character, have uh, zero cards in your hand, something has gone m unbelievably wrong. Um... So yeah, this is just a, a two high block breaker with that is spam. So that as a nine hand size character on turn two, uh, I go, excuse me, nine hand size character going second due to the uh, TKATTS rules, um, it's just good. Moving on, second thing, the beast. Uh, this card once your opponent gets into deadlock is very deadly with uh from signs with love you're constantly flipping your opponent's board that combined with clues means that this becomes multiple million as well as discard top three for a panicked plus two or minus two speed because of our kit being mostly throws we don't necessarily care about the plus speed but minus speed is super super good uh second thing the beast is one of my favorite foundations shane i completely agree dude i completely agree i think second thing the beast is such a such a stunning uh, use of this card. Deadlock Enhance, your opponent flips a, flips a foundation, is so spooky. It is a real deadlock threat under air um, that, 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 that symbol desperately, desperately needed. Speaking of good deadlock threats, double overly dramatic. Uh, this card uh, is very good if my opponent would try to mess around with the stats that matter on cards, whether it be on my cards or your cards. I get to cancel the relevant ones, decrease damage, increase speed. Um, and then it has a deadlock enhance, so if the game goes long, I'm just going to go pick up a Vicious Madness, or I'm going to go pick up a From Science with Love. Because we are only playing uh, two ofs of these multiple cards, um, Vicious, uh, excuse me, Overly Dramatic is a way for us to try and close out the game and go find those uh, crazy cards if my opponent is daring enough to go to deadlock. Up here, we've got Double Servant of Ares. Your throw attack gets four damage. Honestly, this was the most potent uh, text on 
on the card. I thought flip lose to vitality, um, flip one of my selectively flip one of my opponent's foundations was good, but we've got Kaludas for that, right? Enhance commit my swallow your soul gets an extra four damage, so that my swallow your soul is an eight, nine, ten, eleven damage attack. Um, it's as big as vicious madness off of off of another vi uh, five diff. Commit a foundation, eleven damage swallow your soul. Great, great. Um, Kitty Manny's Freedom, we already talked about the play with Swordfish, but you can just do that with any of these assets that you deem important. I will Kitty Manny's Freedom and go grab Elk Shield. Hey, that, that big attack that you're doing, it's not your shotgun. It did one. Good job, buddy. In addition to that, not only does it have this unbelievable defensive ability of going and fetching, fetching this, uh, attack, or fetching this asset on a panic button, it also says that twice per turn, your cool throw attacks get plus two damage. Only playable if I have an asset. I'm Cassandra. I have an asset. For sure I do. For sure, for sure I do. Um, and so giving these extra plus two damage, plus two damage, um, plus two damage, not to mention on top of the Omega, or the, excuse me, the, uh, Owl Shields plus X damage. Stacks on stacks on stacks. Just hyper potent. Very, very good stuff. Uh, double Bakery Poster Girl, making sure that I can block whatever I want. Sometimes, sometimes, my opponent does, is able to play all these big long strings. And so I have played through my double uh, Owl Shields with putting their uh, attack to zero speed, plus not having progressive count on, it doesn't even matter if it's their fifth attack, I'm blocking it with whatever I want, whether it be <laughs> Swallow Your Soul or like a Cormorant and then Breaker Tuing them. Uh, this card just says it sits in my staging area, playable while committed. I'm going to block whatever I need to. Um, this card is another one of those things. This combined with this makes this character just abysmal to try and try and break her wall. Um, a little weaker version, which is hilarious because it's a 3 diff. We've got the Dark Side of Karma that says it is Revoke for a non-character, non-weapon card. So cancel one of those enhances as well as Flip to return it to printed speed as opposed to just zero. Um, and so when you are fighting things like Swallow Your Soul, this card is significantly weaker than this card. When you're fighting the Air Ground Smashes and the Spirit Sword Thrusts and the Sword Get Longers, um, this card is worse than this card. But this card's just a little bit easier to use. So you have it. One Castaway and Forgotten. Flip, discard momentum. After an attack is played, seal it. Man, do we hate uh, things like um, reduction. Man, do we hate things like um, our opponents from Science of Love. Man, do we hate things like um, reverberate. Discard one of those pesky momentum that I definitely got off of uh, my Swallow Soul or any other uh, throw that hits. And I just say, hey, play it. Play it like it was normal. That's those crazy attacks. Get that out of here. That's not a, that's not a thing we're dealing with. Um, we have one new enhancements. Another spectacularly good card. Enhance remove. Add a uh, Earth Foundation from your hand to your staging area. Playable while committed. Hey guys, they're all Earth cards. So if I need to snap, put a refusing to let go down. If I need a bakery poster girl to put down, a playable while committed. Replace this from my hand down in the staging area is super good. It's worth the two, four, three low block slot. Um, this card's better than Damnation. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. Just being able to take and have that a little bit of extra juice. Hey, um, uh, I needed to throw protecting the protector in my staging area right now. I've got it. And the first enhance, I'll toss it down. It's easy. They have to negate this one if they're gonna if they're gonna negate something. Up next, we've got uh, one Beast Hunter. After my opponent plays a second copy of an attack, uh, flip it. So uh, if you play a, a second named one, if I play my second Swallow Your Soul to try and get that super sweet combo, ah, nope, I don't think so. As well as, um, if you absolutely need to, you can unflip some foundations. So we can unflip Servant of Ares, uh, Guardian of Spirit Sword, Overlord Dramatic, um, Dark Side of Karma is a great target for this. Yeah, or if your opponent has flipped your colutes, flipped your cards with colutes, right? If they flipped my uh, owl shields, right, in the mirror match, right? Here's another crazy heads up play. They flipped my owl shield at the start of the turn. I'll just unflip it by by getting by removing this card. Hey, I have mine back. Rat, do it again. <laughs> and then the last foundation that we're playing in the game is one refusing to glow. Um, enhance commit. Sink this attack down to printed minus two. Um, a lot of times, I mean, imagine, I mean, we said we were getting Swallow Your Soul up to 11 damage, right? And so just enhance, commit, refuse, and let go. One damage, Swallow Your Soul. You are not getting that momentum uh, off the top of your deck. It's not happening. Yeah, all in all, main board wise, uh, I dig it. If you could find something to do with dreaming and maybe one protecting the protector, 
uh, I think it's good. After the next sets, if the Dreaming was replaced with Hell's Reach, you could unflip it and be cute. You certainly could, but I'm not positive that this style deck needs... Actually, I'm going to go look up what Earth ones we have. UFSUltra.com. Earth Foundation Zero Diff. Um... Yeah, literally, that's it. Let's go look at my DLC stuff. I had a thing called DLC. No, let me have it. I guess we'll just assume there isn't one and uh, and just have to live with it. Yeah, I guess I guess streaming is, is the best option. I do think that... Um, Captain's Discontent, I just don't see, so the plus damage, when do we get plus damage? We don't get it here, this is no, this is yes, this is yes, this is yes, this is no. Okay, so we don't get it um, on Swallow, we don't get it on Free, so maybe we could, but why not, um, why not? I guess it's just dreaming, right? We could play a mortal knowledge or, or task. I was really looking Lopez for a zero diff for like an easy replacement because Shane, you're right. We could grab Hell's Reach, but um, why not just have dreaming because it does the same job as Hell's Reach for a cost that we have. Yeah, I guess I guess it's just the right call. So I guess the only thing that I can maybe see is protecting the protector. And if the My Hero format, if the My Heroes formats cards make a big enough splash inside of the uh, universe's uh, inside the universe's meta, maybe these cards lose their luster because we don't have as many weapon attacks that are so potent. But with that said, as long as um. As long as Scarlet Meteor exists, this deck, this card will probably exist inside of Cassandra because it is a zero high um, with Omega Sword and Owl Shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's take a peek at uh, his sideboard. We have one Dragon's Tongue, double big Cyclone. Love that. Wow, that's so, so good. <laughs> One spine sweep, afraid of the mirror match. Okay, okay, okay. Um, double ominous prophecy, super neat. Afraid of the afraid of the mirror match. Double stop. A second swordfish, and then a cool and focus to fight multiples. It looks like, and this is crazy. It looks like he was really afraid of the mirror match. It looks like he, he. It looks like he was very, very prepared for the mirror match with Dragon's Tongue, Spine Sweep, Ominous Prophecy. Yeah, I love that. Ominous Prophecy is really good at, once you have figured out what your opponent's deck does, just hosing them completely and saying, hey, you don't get to play flash attacks. You don't get to play tech attacks, no weapons, no throws. That's all super good. And then Big Cyclone, if your opponent has any sort of damage pump, um, any incremental damage pump, you uh, block with Big Cyclone, and then you now say that you don't have access to um, you don't have access to all your little pumps. Like this, this card beats the deck that I was going to take to this event if I was playing. Right, the Fey deck that Chris Miner played um, has a lot of little incremental pumps. You're not allowed to play those abilities because of Big Cyclone. It's very cool. Very cool. And so with that, chat, thank you so much for, for hanging out with me. Thank you for thank you for uh, chilling with us. Um, what are your thoughts on the deck? What are your thoughts on the... Um... Oh, Shane, completely. Everything we're doing here is nit, is net uh, is nitpicking. For sure, for sure. Yeah, this, this, as I said before, this is the most inspired deck from the event. For sure, for sure. He Mark knew exactly what he wanted to play and why he wanted to play it. 100%. Like I said, there's only one card that I could see, and I don't like... And Tamar Cardwell doesn't like Solomon Exorcism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No. For sure. And I was trying to find space to not have one dreaming. But you can't. He, he's already made the decision for us. So, yeah, let us know. Um, chat, we're going to sit here and talk about the, the, the decks a, a little bit. YouTube, let us know down in the comments down below. What do you think uh, of Mark's deck? It, was it perfect? Let us, uh, let us know. We would love to hear.